Okay, so what is central limit theorem? So the last exercise we talk about is like the sample mean for a normal distribution is still normal. Okay, so first of all, your x needs to be normal distribution. And then we select a sample from that. And then we divide that by the total number. That sample mean is still a normal. So in the condition is like it is a normal and then the sample means a normal and then we extend that more now so it's called the central limit theorem so what is central limit theorem so now my x can be any random variable it can not necessarily be normal it can be maybe binomial or even can be some function like that it's just like it is a distribution but it's not a special one not the normal one then I said that distribution with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma. I don't really have a way to represent that. It can be anything. And then provide the sample size n each is large enough. Okay, what you need to highlight is this sentence. So, well, there's not a really clear limitation on that, but like I would say n is roughly 30 is cost sufficient. Okay, so when n is large enough, the sample size I select is large enough, then the distribution of x bar is approximately normal as well. Okay, so before it's x is normal and then it's normal, but now it's x can be anything but that we still have normal distribution for my x bar. That's called the central limit theorem. You need to learn how to prove on that. Okay, basically, I forgot about it. Like, <laughs> we definitely prove on it, and we see some data, but I can't remember much of it. Well, I still can't remember. If you give to me, I can still do it, but like, now I can't clearly show it, but we did it. You don't need to do that in year 12, okay? You don't need to prove this theory. This is a theory. So this is an X is any distribution. We select sample from that, selecting X as samples, X1, X2, Xn. And then we find the sample mean. If N is large, and then the sample mean will be a normal distribution as well. So your sample mean is always a normal distribution. That's what you need to remember after this exercise. Okay, your sample mean is always normal distribution for year 12. It's not actually true. Okay, when N is small, but like they will give you and is sufficient and then make it a normal otherwise you can't do it so basically what we do for those two exercises is using normal distributions so central limit theorem just telling you there's any distribution of x and then give you the mu give you the standard deviation for that x and then you will have x bar will be normally distributed again with mu and sigma divided by root n okay that is still the same that is still the same the only thing changes like x is not normal distribution anymore is the proof it will be the same as what we do here okay the proof will still be that why the mu the, why the expected x bar is mu is because of that <clears throat> we just do that okay why the variance of x bar is that because all of this proof okay when we do those two proof it doesn't matter whether x is normal or not normal Okay, it doesn't matter. It's nothing to do with the normal. It's only when we talk about the distribution with x bar, we say, oh, because all the normal distribution adding together, then it must be a normal as well. But like central limit theorem, the only thing changed here is, well, it doesn't matter. You just have x bar always central, like because of central limit theorem, it's always normal distribution. So that's the only difference between the previous exercise and this exercise. Okay? Well, good. So, have a look at example 7. A continuous random variable x has probability density function that. Okay, x is not normal anymore. Okay, it's just a random distribution here. A random sample of 200 independent observations of x is taken. n equals to 200 here. <coughs> 200 independent observations here. Find a probability that a sample mean exceeds 0.2. So what I want to find is probability x bar is greater than 0.2. But x bar is normally distributed. Remember that? And I need to find the mu and standard deviation for fx. Okay, for the random variable x. So can you help me to find the expected x and variance of x? For that function, that's method. Okay. That's method. How do you find expected values for, let's forget about example mean. Just to, what's the expected x, what's variance of x? It's a little bit harder than method, but like you should be able to do it. I forgot but 
the area underneath the. Area underneath is the probability. Is the probability the area underneath the curve's probability? Is x times f x an integral for that? Okay, so expected x will be integral between negative 2 to 0 because it's a hybrid function. So I'll say expected x is negative to that for x times minus x over 4 dx. And then I'll plus that with 0 to 2 x times x over 4 dx. Okay. Just evaluate that for me. Yeah, well, can you do it by hand? Yeah. yeah, then just do it by hand, it's fine. Make sure you can do it by hand and then you can use cast. But I will use cast because I know I can do it. That's a zero. Expected value is a zero. That's fine. As long as not variance equals to zero, I'm happy about that. Okay. Let's see the shape of this f mm. fx. Negative two. For well, zero, we have zero. Negative two is negative, and we have one. And two, we will have one. So that's the density function. That's two, that's negative two, and that is one. Okay. Okay, you can check. Negative two all over four and that's one. No no not square, not square, that's half. <clears throat> you start negative 2 in, negative 2 over 4 is half, okay, half, that's not 1, because the area needs to be 1, okay, the area needs to be 1, that's a rectangle, you put that together, length 2 and width half, so that is 1, the area is 1, and it's quite symmetrical, you will guess like the middle must, the mean must be 0, okay, how do you calculate variance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it? So it's e x squared minus e x squared. Okay, so what's e x squared? The first one. Yep. So x squared times that. Yes. Plus zero to two and x squared times x over 4 dx and minus 0 squared so that one will become cubic that one will become cubic agree that's a 2 well the variance of x is 2 so what's the standard deviation of that well, I'll use mu here to distinguish between that. What's the standard deviation? Root 2. Okay, <clears throat> my x bar must be normally distributed with mu comma that. That's the formula, okay? The variance of that is squ sigma squared over n. Then the standard deviation of that must be this. So let's put the numbers in. <coughs> Mu is zero. Standard deviation is root two. And uh, root two over what's the sample size? Root two over two hundred. Uh, root two hundred root two is the standard deviation over root two hundred squared. 
Okay, sigma over root n is square root two over square root two hundred. Uh, I can I can simplify it. I can simplify it. Root two over root two times ten, right? That's just what one over ten. Right, right. That's one over ten. Can you see that? That's one over hundred. Square root one over hundred. That's one over ten. So what I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find probability x bar greater than 0.2. Okay, that's the question I'm asking. Find a probability sample mean exists 0.2. So it's probability x bar greater than 0.2. So that equals two. Menu five five two. to infinity with mu zero standard deviation one divided by ten. Standard deviation one divided by ten, right? Is that zero point zero two two seven five? Okay. Any questions? No? And then it go back to go back to what? It go back to the normal approximation to the normal distribution. That one? Uh, yeah. uh, is the notation. The notation for normal distribution is normal. Well, is um, x is normally distributed with mu and standard deviation squared. That's just the notation. What you need to write here is the variance, actually, not the standard deviation. It's just a notation thing. The standard deviation is still 1 on 10. You just need to write variance there. So it's 1 on 100. Other questions? Okay, if not, uh, <clears throat> what is the, the next one? Well, you have learned that is binomial approximation. Do you remember that? Methods, methods, methods? I know you two know that. Methods finish? So, is the binomial one? Well, we have a binomial distribution, and then when you put all the dots on, and you find when n is large enough, then the dot all together looks like a normal distribution curve. Well, that's exactly my same thing. Okay, that's exactly the last exercise of sixteen. The last exercise of sixteen. The last thing you learned is like normal distribution become a, a binomial distribution is a discrete one but when n is large enough it will be approximately treated as a normal distribution and then you use the normal approximation to talk about the values okay let's have a look at this question here then uh, for example eight okay it's just one really easy thing like it shouldn't belong to this exercise at all it's nothing to do with sample mean it just say we can a lot of things can be approximated to normal okay a lot of things can be approximate to normal that's why the ex this question is here but as mentioned in the book i just think about like do a little bit revision with you and also remind you about method thing okay so it has established in the past that 20 percent of the population of a certain country smoke okay and suppose a random sample of a thousand people is chosen from this problem. Well, what is what I say n is sufficient large. What is sufficient large? Um, is that n p greater than five and n one minus p greater than five? First of all, x must be a binomial distribution, and we have n p greater than five and n times one minus p greater than five. Then we say n is sufficient large. 
Okay, let's have a look at this one. So P is 0.2 in this case, which is the probability that people smoke is 0.2. And then the N will equal to 1,000, which is people chosen from the sample population. Okay, it's the sample 100. So X, well, let X be the number of people smoke in the sample. What I will have is x is binomially distributed with a thousand and point two. Why a thousand and point two? Because if you select a thousand people, every single people will answer you yes or no, whether it's small, yes or no. And if they answer yes, there will be a point two probability to answer yes, and point eight of the probability answer no. So you only have two outcomes, yes or no. And every single person will be independent from each other. So that's a binomial <coughs> that's a binomial distribution. Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay, so now I'll check MP. MP is two hundred. A thousand times point two. That's greater than five. And MP one minus P. That's eight hundred. That's greater than five as well. So I can use normal approximation. Well, it's only when the question asks you to do use normal approximation, then you use it. Okay, do not use it. You can just use binomial to do it. You have your calculator. You can put lower bound, you can put upper bound. Why are we bothered of using approximation? It actually turns the question harder when you have a calculator. So unless the question asks you to do that, please do not. Okay, do not use it. So find the probability that Okay, because this is under the normal approximation exercise, then we will just use normal approximation. So the normal approximation will be, what is the mu, what is the standard deviation? So mu is expected x. The expected x is np, which is 200. Okay. And we'll have variance of x. That equals to MP1 minus P. That is 200 times 0.8. That is 160. Yes. 20 times 2, 160. MP1 minus P is the standard variance. Okay. And then the standard deviation of X will be square root 160. That is 4 root 10. Okay, so x is approximately normally distributed with mu of 200 and standard deviation of 4 root 10 squared. Okay. Let's have a look at A. At least 210 people in the sample smoke. Okay, A. Probability x greater than at least greater or equal to 110. If it's binomial, it does matter. If it becomes a normal, it doesn't matter. Because it's one discrete, one continuous, right? <coughs> Let's say if it's binomial, if it's binomial, the number of trial is a thousand. Successful rate is 0.2. And then at least 210, you will have 210 there. If you have just greater, there will be 211. Yeah, 211. So that will be different. And the upper bound will be a thousand. Well, if it's normal, it doesn't matter. Well, that's the actual rate. Okay, that's the actual rate. Okay, that's the actual. And what is the for normal approximation? Menu 552. Five, so you have 210 to infinity. The mu is how many? 200? Yeah. And standard deviation is 4 root 10.
That's the probability. Well, because it's ended, because I, I make the question, because I know it's ended that exercise. But normally, if it appears in exam like that, you use no binomial. You're not using normal. Because then it say you need to use normal. Because I just make put it under that, so we'll use normal distribution here. Okay, zero point one two one four six. Approximately zero point two one four six. <coughs> that use normal. How about if you use binomial? Binomial gives. 0 0.2253 that's binomial can you see like it's what about 1% difference it's more than 1% difference it is actually quite large okay, it's not that accurate that's why I don't like to use approximation it's not that good okay, it's totally not that good <clears throat> Have a look at B. <clears throat> B says no more than 18% of the people in the sample smoke. So 20%, uh, 18%, right? 18%. So a thousand times 18%, that gives you 180. Okay, 180. So I want the probability x no more than okay, equals to. That's what I want. Okay, that's what I want. Eighteen percent is one hundred eighty people, so I want that. Therefore, I can use. So I still use this normal CDN. Uh, I want minus infinity. Well, have a think about that. If you use normal, then the thousand is not the restriction anymore. Oh. To 180, so it will be negative infinity or positive infinity. The thousand is not the bound restriction point. That's 0 0.0569. That's use normal. Okay, let's have a think how about we use binomial. Menu 55p. So binomial is a thousand. Successful rate is 0 0.2. I can have lower bound is zero and upper bound 180. Okay, it can't be more than 180. So 180 is the largest number. It's 0 0.0602. Okay, that's the exact value. You can compare them, you okay, can compare them. Okay. Questions? 
Well, same. This is exactly method thing. Okay, it's not stash. Okay, confidence interval. That's again very similar to method thing. Do you remember? Do you remember when we talk about in confidence interval for po uh, for population proportions? Do you remember that? Yes. In methods. Yeah, it's the is the um, <coughs> mu minus the k times square root and uh, p one minus p over n, and then to mu plus k p one minus p over n, right? That's what we learned at that time. And then what's this k? This k will give you c percent of the confidence interval. You find the k value by using calculators. That's what we learn in methods. Okay, so that's what we learn in methods. Um, what's this mu? And what's that? That's the mu is expected value. Well, I'll write here. The mu is the expected value for p hat. And that is the standard deviation for p hat. Remember, because the p hat is x over n. p hat comes from x over n. That's when we do the sample proportion. And x is a binomial distribution. Okay, x is a binomial distribution. And then we have, like, that's quite similar to a binomial notation. P times 1 minus P over N square root of that. That is the that is the standard deviation for P hat. Okay, so now for X bar. Have a think about X bar. X bar is normally distributed with mu and sigma over square root N squared. So the confidence interval will become mu minus K times that comma mu plus k dot that that's the confidence interval again probability of minus k z to k is still c percent of the confidence interval what is mu mu is expected of x bar what is standard deviation over square root n that's the Standard deviation over x bar. Okay. Here, see, we just change it because that one before it follows a normal distribution. This one follows normal, and the sample proportion follows a binomial distribution. That's why the standard deviation are different for both of that. That one. That's one for sample mean. The sample proportion. The top one is for sample proportion, which is binomial. Can see binomial p times 1 minus p? That's exactly the variance for binomial. And p 1 minus p is the variance for binomial. Sample, uh, uh, not a standard proportion. It's called the population proportion. The top one is the population proportion. We talk about, like, we talk about, um, I want to know the female proportion for whole Australia. And then I select a sample of 20 and then see how many females are there and then use the number of females divided by the total 20. That's x over n, that's x over n. And because x is a binomial distribution, so expected x will become np. Variance of x is np1 minus p. And then there's a divide n there, so that's why expected p hat is mu. And then the variance of p, uh, p hat is p times 1 minus p over n and therefore the standard deviation is square root of that yes but like what i want to say here is exactly the same for this exercise and then the methods exercise as well it's actually good well actually it's good to combine them together and then talk about that together okay it's actually good to talk about them together it's identical it, the only thing changes the standard deviation because the expected value for p hat and the expected value for x bar they are the same. It's all mu. 
What's wrong? There's no X in my name. What's P? P hat. There's no P hat in Spanish. Only P hat in Messages. Oh, so you P hat. You're not using P hat in Spanish, but you use P hat in Messages. So you need to know both of that. X bar. X bar is the sample mean. So what does sample mean? Sample mean is select twenty things, I adding them, and I divide by twenty. That's called the sample mean. No x y methods. And what sample proportion? Sample proportion is I collect 20 things. I classify that as two different groups. And I see, oh, how many females are there in this 20 people? Okay, eight females. Eight over 20. That gives me a sample proportion. Okay, the proportion, so which is 40%. Okay, that's called the proportion. Proportion is total number of something I'm interested in over the total of numbers. And sample mean is adding all of that and then divide by the total number. Does that make sense? Uh, so sample mean is x bar. Yeah, mean. But x you get it from p hat. It's not getting from p hat. There's so no the connection. X. It's all getting from the x. Everything is connected to x, but nothing connected with p, p and x bar. Okay, so what is x bar? What is x bar? x bar is x1 plus x2 plus x3, x3 dot 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 plus xn over n. That's called x bar. It's coming from x. It's the individual, like x1 to xn, they're all individual, independent, like identical sample, sample distribution. Uh, not sample. Uh, random variable distribution like they are all identical from x1 to xn but what is p hat p hat is x over x over n this x is not the same as this x okay there are two different things this x this x is binomially distributed with n comma p but for this x okay these x can be any distribution. But it can be binomial. Yeah, it can be binomial. Yes, it can. It can be the same, but like normal is not. Normal is from normal. In special, we talk about normal more. It can be any distribution. But for at p hat, it can only be binomial. Okay, so you're not gonna put binomial. Well, it's okay. You put Binomial is nothing wrong. What's, what's binomial? What I'm interested in in this case is only in the expected x that equals to mu. And then what I'm interested in the variance of x that is standard deviation squared. Uh, no, I'm interested in standard deviation actually. That's sigma. That's it. Even though it's a binomial distribution, what's wrong? I still can find expected x. I still can find standard deviation of x. If it's a binomial distribution, then mu is np, right? Standard deviation is square root of np1 minus p. Well, if it's normal, then it's just mu and standard deviation. If it's other distribution, like what we did here, we find it. We find what's expected x and what is the standard deviation of x. Okay? But, but the thing is, A very important thing here is if you want to talk about the difference between them, x bar is always normally distributed. Well, let's say we have x is any distribution and with expected x equals to mu and standard deviation x equals to sigma. Well, I can find them, like even though it can be any distribution, I can find them. But x bar is always normally distributed with mu and that always p hat is approximate normally distributed with np P 
1 minus p over n uh, squared. The cost of the of that. It's approximate, okay? It's never exact. It's approximate equals to that. And this x, remember that x must be, okay, where's the n and p coming from? The n and p is coming from the above. x is binomially distributed with n and p. That's the difference. There are two different distributions. They are all normal distribution, but one is always like that. One is approximately like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the mu and standard deviation are the different as well. Well, for the top one, mu and standard deviation can change according to what distribution of x you have. Well, it's changing with the x. Well, it can be binomial. Yes, then the mu becomes n times t. What's wrong? Nothing wrong. Okay, so it can change. The distribution can change. But for the bottom one, the mu is that. The standard deviation must be that. Your x must be binomial distribution. Yes? Okay, that's the difference. That's the two different. Well, I think students will confuse this one. But that's the difference. Okay, at least the difference here. Okay. So now, again, then the confidence interval is like before is mu minus that, 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 that's the mu, that's the standard deviation for p hat, right? Then I will just change those two things into the mu and standard deviation for x bar. Okay, change that to x bar. So mu is still that standard expected value for x bar, but standard deviation is that divided by that. Okay, that's what I have here. Okay, that's what I have here. I will change that to this. I'm not going to go through the proof step again, it's just useless. You just need to remember the result. You don't have time to go through all this proof again in the exam, so you just need to know the formula. So you find the expected value for x bar, you find the standard deviation for x bar, and you find the k value. The k is 90% confidence, or normally 95. 95 is 1.96. 99% uh, is 2.58. Well, you can have 90% as well. You can have 90, 90, 95, 99. That's normally those three okay, we talk about. So, at least everything here. Okay, at least everything here. That's the formula you need to remember. Okay, that's the formula you need to remember. And plus is the K, X bar. Okay, so what is mu? Okay, I said mu here. So, um, sorry, before we, I need to change that, that's a little p hat, p hat, that's the same as that, that's a value work out. And then here I will have like lowercase x bar, lowercase x bar. So what's that x bar? The x bar is a point estimation. X bar is a point estimation. So this x bar is calculate from a, single sample it's calculate from a single sample well that value you need to calculate that out by yourself okay you calculate that out by yourself so you calculate it from a single sample this is called a point estimation do you remember that from methods <laughs> point estimation is the sample can't be always tr like always a good sample or it can't always be exactly the same as the true that true mean, true variance. But I will use it, I will assume it that's one point estimation. I will just use it. I'll just use that sample in all my calculations. Normally, like scientists will do more samples, right? I will do like 10 groups of like samples and then find average or something like that. And then use that as my final result. But now, no, we just use one group, directly work the value out and then sub that in, sub that in. Okay. And again, everything is the same for method here. Okay, the margin of the error of a confidence interval. So what is called the margin of error? Do you remember margin of error from method? No, again, no. Margin error, is that familiar to you? Okay, if it's easier if you know that, okay. Have a look at this formula. That's all from x bar. You subtract something and then you add something, right? So your x bar is in the middle. Then you have one value here, one value here. They must be equal distance, right? 
this to the same distance. That is k times sigma over that. And this will be the same as well because you go left by that much and go right by that much. Right? One of that is called the margin error. So how much you go for from left and go from right, that's called the margin error. So it's the distance you go left and go right. It's not the total length, okay? It's the half of it you go left. How much you go left? Okay, it's k times sigma root n. It's called the margin error. So it's this one, k times. Well, that's a formula, okay? I'll just highlight that one as well. That's a formula. And a 95% confidence interval for curvature will have the margin error equals to a specific value m. Then, okay, a 95 confidence interval, so which means 1.96 times sigma over root n, that equals to a specific value m. Let's say that is m. Okay, that is m. So, 1.96 sigma over m should equals to square root n. Then n equals to 1.96 sigma over m squared. That we order like if you tell me the margin error, you can I can work out the sample uh, sample amount like how many samples I need the n value okay the number of samples I can work out n. So that's the margin error. If you tell me for your 95% confidence interval, you have a margin error of that, I can work out n. Well, it's not always 1.96 because it can be 99% confidence interval. It can be 90% of confidence interval. So it depends. Depends on how many, how much percent of confidence intervals you have. That value will change according to that as well. And then, so therefore, C percent confidence interval. So that will be the k value, okay? Probability, probability negative k to k is C percent. So the k times sigma over square root n, that gives you a particular level m. If you rearrange it, you have k squared m and then whole thing squared. That's how you will call your n. So it's a rearranging. You don't really need to memorize this formula, but that's another formula. Okay, this one is talking about margin error. Okay, one is talking about margin of errors. One is talk about the sample size n, and the other one is talk about the confidence interval. There's three things on this page you need to know. Okay, let's have a look at questions then. Okay, have a try of the example nine by yourself. It's just a pure formula. Thing. Ninety-eight percent confidence interval, right? What's Z? Do you remember what's capital Z? What is called? What is called standard standardized normal? Well, you don't need to X minus. Z is normal distribution with zero and one. That's called the standardized normal. Okay. What I need. As, as I said, I need, well, it's a 98% confidence interval, right? That's negative to k, negative k to k. I need a 98%. What do I have here? What's Point zero point zero point zero one. Okay, one subtract point nine eight is zero point zero two and divide by two zero point zero one. Okay, so to the left of k, what you have is zero point nine nine, right? So calculator, menu five five three inverse normal zero point nine nine zero and one. 
is 2.326. Okay. So 98% is 2% left, 1% on each side. Then you exclude the right hand side. The left hand side is 99%, 0 0.99. And then 0, 01. The K is 2.326. 2.326. Okay, that's K. So, oh, sorry, I forgot to type the bar. Okay, there's a bar. Why I forgot that? Not very important. There's a bar. So, for from one sample, it tells us that the average is 86. The sample mean is 86.6. That's X bar. That's the X bar. That's and exactly this X bar. That's this X bar here. Wait, you don't know mu. The problem in this question is you don't know mu. You're guessing your mu is in between which to which. Okay, let's let's make it clear what we're trying to do for this question. Is you have a group of sample. You have no idea of what is your true mu is. Well, if you know the mu, I'm 100% confident that my mu is that. Why are we still talking about confidence interval? Think about that. Wait, so basically, we are doing the second line of that. Which, which, which second? Um, that. The, no, wait, the second, wait, we're down to the second line. Wait, we're up. Wait. We're doing this one, right? Here? Wait, you know how it's a probability maybe 1.92? Don't worry about that. Just don't look at that. Just don't look at that, okay? You don't need that if you can't understand. Just don't worry about that at all. So what we're talking about now is, let's just talk about the average height of 17 years old girl, okay? I don't know what is it. How do you can know? You don't know. You just don't know. There's no way you can find it out. Then if, well, make sure you understand that. If I know the actual true mean, why we use sample? We use sample is because the, the, uh, like the number population is too large. I don't know what to do. I can't add all of that, like 10 million people together and divide by 10 million. So I need to select a sample of 10 and I'm trying to Oh, let's have a play with you. Have a think about like what we have, and then we find a sample mean. Yeah, we find a sample mean. We use that sample mean to guess what is my true mean. But I can't guess it. I can't guess up. It true mean must be this. Must be this. It will be a range of values. Okay, it will be a range of values. So what is that range of values? Is this formula? Okay, is this formula, the, the highlight formula? What, what happened to this formula? Which one? Can you read it? Uh, what happened to the, the red line? I change it. Can you see I change it? I change it to X bar. Yeah, but why was it different before? It's not different. Well, actually, it should be that. But because we don't have that, we just have no information about that. That's why we can't use that. Can you just swap it out? It's not, it's not really like that, that easy to swap out. It's because there's reasons behind. Like we can swap it. We, we use this called point estimation. We use our sample whatever I had for this time. We use that to treat it as my good, like a correct way of calculating my samples. Okay. Huh? We just find K. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different. Okay, it's not not about K at all. So what we do is we want to know where's our mu. I want a range of values. I say my mu must be lying somewhere here. I don't know what exactly is that. Just forget all your theories. Okay, it's not correct. So what you need is a sample mean. Okay. The sample mean is given is eighty six point six. Wait, so X bar 
It's not. It's just one, one sample. One, one, one sample. You have so many students there. You find the average for it. Okay, you find it out. That's eighty-six point six, and we use that. Okay, that's a reasonably good values. I will use that to guess where's my mu is. So that that is the mu of one value. It's nothing to do with the mu yet. This is just like for this sample, what I have is just observation. Observation I have. I observe that. That's just observation. Of the sample, okay. I didn't say this must be right, right? I didn't say it must be the true mu. It's just observation I have from this group, and now I'm using this group, combining those formulas, to find a range of values where my true mu will be. Yes. Yes. Okay. This true mu. I doesn't say this true mu. Hundred percent will lie within those two values. I find that's why we use a confidence interval, ninety-eight percent confidence. I say I'm ninety-eight percent confident that using my this x bar, this sample mu, sample mean, I find a range of values. Okay, in between those two values, I will have my true mu. My true mu. I imagine a confidence that my true mu will lie in between those two range. Okay, it can't be. It can never become a hundred percent confident because if it's hundred percent confident, I just say negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay. It. it um, well, what we have is like. Doesn't matter how good is your sample. There's always possibility your true mu is outside. There's still a possibility. It can be very, 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 very low. Like, for example, this one is two percent. I'm two percent unsure. My mu whether will be lies outside or not. Okay, that's the ninety-eight confidence means. I'm ninety-eight percent sure the true mu will be in between those two values. The larger the confidence, the larger value the confidence, the wider the range. Okay, the wider the range. Because have a think, I'm hundred percent sure it's just infinity, everything, and I just want eight ninety eight percent sure. I can reduce it a little bit. That's only ninety eight percent sure. I say ninety percent sure only. I can reduce to an even smaller value. The mu is more likely to go outside. I just needs to increase my size, and then the mu will just slide in between that. Well, when I take it to negative infinity to positive infinity, the mu just Well, it must be there. Okay, it must be real number. It must be there. So that's the confidence interval means. Okay. So for this question, what we have is x bar is eighty six point six. That's one observation. Well, it's a group of observations, average. Okay. I have I have how many people? I have. Uh, No, it's a ninety-seven-year-old children. Okay, my n is ninety. So I am collecting a group of ninety children, adding them, divide by ninety, and find this average. Okay, that's my sample mean. I'll use this to estimate where's my true mu is, and I'm looking for ninety-eight percent confidence. I need to find that k value. That k value minus k to positive k will give me ninety eight percent, and I'm using inverse normal. Zero point nine nine because that's to the left of this point k, and that's a zero comma one. Right, that's a zero comma one. You don't need to write that. Okay, you don't need to write that. We just show you what we did to find this k. What is that k? This k must be two point three two six. That k gives you ninety eight percent confidence, and then I just okay. And this variance. So variance. What's the variance for? That's the variance of x bar. That gives you one o nine point nine. Okay, one o nine point nine. Oh. Oh, one o six point nine. Okay, so what we have here, and then we need to find the standard deviation. What's the standard deviation? Um, 
square root of, well, I just put a square root. Okay. So per minute and give you a variance of that, the variance of that sample mean is 106.9. And then the standard vision of that thing is square root of 109.6. Okay, that is just equivalent to the sigma over square root n. What sigma over square root n? That's the standard deviation of x bar, right? That's the standard deviation of x bar. So, can you put everything into the calculator and work out that for me? Just everything you know that. Okay, everything you know is the 86.6 minus 2.326 times times that, what's that? That's 109, 90x. Okay, and I need to plus it. Mm. Hmm? Three. Uh, uh, divide by. Wait, that's the. Uh, I haven't divided by square root n. Divide by this. Uh, fraction. Oh, I'll count change it. I need to change that. Uh, sigma divided by square root. What square root? What's n? 19. Okay, that's eighty four point nine. Well, and then I will say sigma over square root n is square root one oh nine point nine over square root of 90. Haven't used n before. Is the is the um how can I explain that? Is the standard deviation for the sample? Okay, is the standard deviation for the sample? Well, you can treat it. Mm. It's very hard to explain. Okay, this sample, I'll use, I've used this sample as, because I don't know the true thing, okay? I don't know the true mu and true standard deviation. Therefore, I use a sample. Use a sample to think about, okay, estimate, and let's say, estimate the true mu and true standard deviation. Okay, true mu and true standard deviation. So, the, Expect the expected value I find, I will say I use that to calculate the true mu. That's 86.6. And then the standard deviation I find is the standard deviation for the true thing. Okay, the true the sigma. I will say that's the sigma. What I find is the sigma. Because I haven't taken n into consideration yet. I haven't calculated n. This has nothing to do with the sample yet is the sigma, the true, like the actual sigma for these populations, okay, for these populations. So is the sigma, now it's just like, um, like this question. Okay, that 86.6 is like the zero here. Okay, it's like the zero here. It's the difference is like the true, the true mu here. And then the, 
106.9 is about this two, like this two here. It's for the original thing, okay? For the original population, I have a mu of 86.6 and a standard deviation of 80, uh, 106.9, square root that. And then the formula is, the formula is dy by root n, dy by root n. So that sigma needs to dy by root n as well. Okay, okay. Um, well, it's, it's actually more like com quite complex explanation behind that. Uh, what you can do is just remember the formula and remember to substitute everything. In. That's it. So we have this approximately how many decimals? Uh, I just well say two decimals, eighty-four point oh six. And then we have the plus one. That's approximately eighty nine point what well, two decimals as well, eighty nine point one four. So the range will be eighty four point oh six to eighty nine point one four. That's the confidence interval. Okay, that's 98% confidence my true meal will lie within this. Okay, within that. You have a trial example tender or so. Coffee owner needs to estimate how many cups of coffee she sells per hour in order to determine her staffing needs. And if the number of cups of coffee served per hour has a standard deviation of 10, okay, has a standard deviation of 10, what size sample is required? Okay, what size of sample is required so that her owner can be at least 95% confidence. So the confidence level is 95%. So the K value, I will take, um, uh, what is 1.96? The K is 1.96. Okay, I just write whatever I know, okay? The difference between the sample mean and the true mean. Okay, the difference between the sample mean And the true mean. Is not more than five. Okay, it's not more than five. Let's think about your X bar. Okay, think about X bar. Not more than five, right? Not than more than five. So think about your X bar, your sample mean. You will, I don't know the sample mean yet. I will find out the sample mean, right? How they have three points? How do I evaluate that? That's the sample mean, right? I will find the sample mean to help me to find out the true mean. And then what's the most right-hand side value? Left-hand side, what's this value? Not minus five is minus k times square root, like that, right? That's most left hand side. Uh, that should be symmetrical. Okay, let's 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 go step by step. Okay, the most right hand side value will be that. Okay, your bar is there. My mu will be sliding between that, right? The maximum difference will be five. Okay, not more than five. The maximum difference will be five, right? So that's the farthest point compared to x bar. Is that correct? If my true mu is just um, less on that, it's the farthest point that. So I want this distance less than five. 
I want that distance less than 5. So what I need is k times less than 5. It's not 5, not more than 5. It can be 4. Why not necessarily 5? No more than 5. Well, the farthest point can be 5. Yeah. Why not? No, no, no. What I need is not more than 5. It can be just 4. The maximum difference can only be 4. It's fine. Yeah, it depends on what and I take. Well, but the five is the worst case I want. It's like a boundary thing. Okay, I I, I can have like for for example, my x bar is five, uh, ten. Okay, the worst case I want this to achieve is a five because it's five away from that, and that is a fifteen. That's the worst case I want. Yeah, you can find equal five. That's no, no. What you need to think now is this is what they want. Okay, this is according to the question what they want. Yes, when I solve it, I want to solve for equals to five. But n is not a single value. Okay, n is a range of values. It's not just equals to something. N is a range of values. It's a it's an inequality thing. It's not equals to something. Okay, and it can be five, that's the worst case. But it can be six, that side can be 14. That's a better case. Okay, that's still within five, the difference. So the worst thing I want is here is a five, here is a 15. So I want the worst case is the distance is a five. Okay, so the distance is a five. I need that less than five. If less than five, that's all good. Okay, nothing wrong with it. So k is 1.96 times standard deviation is 10 over square root of n. Let's say that equals to 5 because we solve for equation first. And I have 19.6 over 5 equals to root n. n equals to. Zero point one five nineteen point six nineteen point six not nine point six nineteen point six. Okay, fifteen point three six six four. So no more than so less than or equals to let's say that's a less than or equals to n needs to be uh, like let's say that n equals to 15.3.4 let's say this 15.4 so your n needs to be greater or equals to 15.4 it can't be smaller because have a think k is fixed sigma is fixed i need a larger value to make that number smaller okay make that number small i want smaller than five it must be greater value it's a larger value a is much larger. So, which I can say n must be greater or equal to 16. And n belongs to integer. Well, I'll say z plus. It must be integer, positive integer. n greater or equal to 16. I can't take 15, I can take 16. Must be larger than that. Okay, so, can you see the different, the, the thing here? The larger the n, the little the margin error. You have a greater and your margin error will reduce, even though for the same level of confidence interval. Okay, it's all a 95% confidence interval. But the larger the n value takes, well, the larger the sample, the less the error you have. That's instead what you have. Like you can think about that. If I have more samples, I'll have a better result. Well, two people do the sample, it's not good compared to 10 people do the sample, right? So you want more people involved in your sample. That's why you want to collect that house. You want to collect 100 that house, not 10 only. So you want a larger n to reduce the error, and you reduce your margin error as well in the same level of confidence interval. That's why why you take a 16 above, you have a margin error less than 5. This question wants a margin error less than 5. 
ठीक है